no matter if you are an engineer, developer, marketer, or in the help desk support. It is always good to have a basic knowledge on what happened when you type a URL or a website name on the browser. To make our life easier, we'll take an example of google.com as our website. Hello everyone, my name is Rajneesh Gupta, cybersecurity practitioner and author. In this video, we'll be learning about what happened when you type google.com on the browser. Every website has got a unique IP address and that's what your computer look for. Just like your phone book maintain the list of person name and their contact number, domain name system that's DNS maintains the list of website name and their corresponding IP address. Now to get the IP address of the website, in our case, the google.com, your computer will perform certain operations. Now it will check the cache. Now cache is the past history. Uh, that has been maintained either in the browser or it could be present in the operating system maybe windows linux or mac os as well or it can also look for a cache present in the router as well if the cache is not present your computer send a query to the ip address the server ip address mentioned in the network adapter and in most of the cases it's the service provider once your computer get the IP address, it will initiate a TCP connection called three-way handshake. Now let's understand the three-way handshake. First, your computer send a SYN packet to Google server and asking to open a session for you. Now Google basically opens the port and accept the connection. And it will also send SYN and ACK packet. At the end, the client send and acknowledge the connection by sending the ACK packet. Now, once the TCP connection is established, your browser will initiate a SSL connection. And this is, this is required because Google serves every client on HTTPS. That's a secure HTTP connection. Now, in case of SSL connection, or we call it as SSL three-way handshake, the browser and the server exchange SSL hellos and keys to establish an end-to-end -end encrypted session. Now it's all because of SSL, you can confidently share your data with Google and you don't really fear about if somebody else is listening to your data, which is getting exchanged across, right? And you can always verify the connection as well by looking at the batch, which has been mentioned on the top of the URL. Now, once this SSL connection three-way handshake basically established, your browser sent a request. It's a HTTP GET request to Google server asking for content of google.com. This request also contain information such as user agent headers, like your browser, it could be Chrome, Mozilla, or Microsoft Edge. Then we ha also have accept header that gives the information about type of request that it can accept. Then we also have connection header. It is just, just about asking, uh, in this case, the browser asks the Google server to keep the TCP connection alive for any additional requests. It will also pass cookie if available. And cookie is nothing but the information which is mostly used for authentication purpose or in case when we have e-commerce site and browser, the target browser or the target website need to grab some uh, past purchase information. Now, once the server receives the HTTP request, it need to send the respond message type as well. Now, once the server receives the HTTP GET request from the client computer, it need to respond. In the case of HTTP GET request, the response contains the web page itself. In our case, it could be this Google Doodle. There could be multiple status code. In a successful response, it's going to be 200. That simply, simply indicates OK. Now, finally, we have arrived at a point where we see the Google search engine with the lovely Google. Loop. All right, so this is all about what happens behind the scene when you type google.com. If you enjoyed the video, you can leave a like. You can also follow me on Twitter. Bye for now.